That ain't good. I'm gonna show you how to fix that. And we're gonna do it right now. The first step to fixing something like this is to figure out what caused it. That's my preference anyways, because I don't wanna have to do this again. This was caused by water. And where the water came from is if you look up, you can see that there's a gutter there, but that was not always the case. So when there wasn't a gutter there, the water would come straight down off the roof, hit this concrete and bounce up and saturate this, which caused this. There's a little bit of damage on the other side, but it's really not as bad. So this piece of trim right here is no big deal. Taking that off, putting a new piece on. This part is a little trickier because this is actually part of this door. So instead of replacing this entire door, I'm just gonna patch this in so we can save a bunch of money. Now you may have noticed some staining on the front of the gutters up there, which means that it was overflowing and that could also contribute to this problem in the future. So that has been fixed. So now I feel comfortable fixing this and not having to worry about fixing it again anytime soon. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna start by removing this trim. I already have a replacement piece for this. I already have all the materials to fix this so I can get to work. This is obviously gonna come out really easy. And there it goes. And then I'll just work my way up. Take a bigger pry bar and then use this one so I don't mark up the trim too much. I just want to be careful at the top. If there was caulking here, I would cut that, but I can see a gap, so should be good. Okay. Now I'm gonna take out all the nails. So I am ready to put my new piece in when it's time. So next, I want to determine how far this rot goes. That's just paint peeling. It's looking like somewhere around there where it stops. And I'm gonna hack this piece out. I'm gonna go up a little higher, and I actually wanna cut this at a 45 like this, because I think that'll make this seam out here look better. So I'm gonna show you a little trick to how I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna cut a one or two inch piece like this at a 45 degree angle. So I'm gonna go up a little higher than where I know the rot ends. And basically this is gonna go like this to help me make that 45 degree angle cut. I know that I want it to be about there, make a little mark there, and then use my square against the door to make it nice and square when I cut it, like this. And then I'll take this piece, hold it to that line, and I'm gonna nail it in place. These two nails should hold it right where it needs to be. In order to make this cut, I'm gonna use, of course, my favorite tool in the world, the oscillating tool. I've changed the blade so it's kind of sideways because I won't be able to get in there like this because of the door. So I'm just gonna ride along this piece and cut that 45. And it may not be perfect, but I think it's gonna work for me. There's no other way to get a saw in here to make that cut. And I could cut it straight if I wanted to, but I think this is gonna just look better in the end. So let's make this cut. Let's stop the video for a second because I have a confession to make. I messed up. Have you noticed what I'm doing wrong here? If you haven't noticed, I'm glad that I'm talking about it because people that don't do this every day could make the same mistake. What I'm doing with the piece I'm about to cut is I'm cutting the angle down this way. The problem with that is when you put the new piece in, this is called a scarf joint, and as I said, you could cut it straight, but I like these because it 
makes a nicer seam. Doing this on the inside of your house is totally fine. But working on the outside of your house is not great because you have rain and you have snow and you have ice. And if you have water rolling down this, it is much more likely for the water to get in and in the seam once it breaks down and roll into your house. So the right way and the most common practice is to do it this way because it is much more unlikely for the water to roll down here and then travel up into your house that way. It's much more likely that the water will just roll right past this seam. So I did most of this job. I drove home, I sat on the couch, I was relaxing and then all of a sudden, boom, it popped in my head that I messed up. I'm a human, that happens, I can't know everything, but I'm in a tough spot because I am supposed to be the guy that's showing you what to do and how to do it. And I'm sorry, I messed up. And I'm gonna leave it that way because sometimes you have to weigh your options, you have to make a decision, is it worth tearing it all apart? For this video, I wanted to tear it all apart, I wanted to start over, but I don't think I need to. I'm under a nice overhang, there's no more water bouncing up onto that. It's high enough up where snow isn't gonna sit there. It's gonna take 20, 30 years for that to rot out, and by that time, the door is probably gonna need to be replaced regardless. Besides, this is my in-laws house, they'll give me a call. With that said, try and remember to do things the right way, but it's okay if you mess up because you can't know everything. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. take this insulation out for now so I can see what I'm working with here. Okay, you can see that's like a composite on the bottom here. And this is flashed properly, so that's good. A waterproof membrane right there. This goes all the way back. This wood is kind of notched and this sits in there, so I'm gonna have to cut it or chisel it out just so I can get my new piece to be flush with this right here. I don't wanna to go too far down and put a hole in this waterproofing. Okay, see if I can get this staple out. Now that I've cut this all out, I can see that the bottom couple inches of this door frame was made from a composite material. And if the entire thing was made out of this, I would have never had to do this. So I'm gonna be putting PVC back here and I'm gonna be using three quarter instead of what's here now, just because I already have some, so I'm gonna make it work so I don't have to buy a whole new piece. I'm gonna chisel this old caulking out of the way carefully. With stuff like this, by the way, I recommend using an old chisel or one that is already dull so you don't mess up your good chisel. Okay, cool. Now I can take this off. And take these nails out. Use a putty knife just so I don't mark up this trim any more than I have to, or frame, I should say. So I'm gonna rip a piece at four and three eighths, and I'm gonna rough cut one at, let's say, 18 inches. This is Veranda PVC trim. It is paintable. You never have to paint it, and it will never rot. So that's why I'm gonna use it.
So if I put my piece up here tight, where it's gonna kinda go, you can see on the bottom, this door threshold is at an angle, like it should be. So I have to match that angle. There's a couple ways to do this. One is to measure this gap right here, a little more than half inch. And then I can take my piece and mark on this side, half inch. And then you can take that mark and take a straight line like this and mark it from that half inch to nothing. Or you can take a T-bevel, or I like to call it an angle finder, and hold it against the door here, push it down tight, tighten this up, and you have your angle. And that should match what I measured. Perfect. I'm gonna clean this off, make sure we're good. And before I cut this angle, I'm gonna measure on the back here, right up to my cut right here, 11 and a half strong. So that measurement, I measure from here because that is facing the door up to here. And then my 45 is gonna go like this. And then on this side, I don't have to worry about this cut. I just have to cut a square 45 here because I marked it square and I cut it square on the door. So I'll go cut this piece. So now I have to match that angle on my saw and make that cut. Just estimate that. And I bring the blade down against the line and look down the saw. That looks pretty good. Make sure this is tight and cut that angle. That looks good. Cut that line off. Okay, and I'm gonna immediately change this back to square. I'm gonna hook down here on the proper side, 11 and a half strong. Really, I'm gonna go 11 and 9 sixteenths right here. And remember, this is a 45 and this is the orientation. So just make sure you do that on the saw. Check our piece. Line it up with the front here. That's the important part. That angle looks perfect. And then this seam looks great. Now before I attach this, what I wanna do is also put a piece back here because when I put this trim on, you can see I'm only gonna have about an eighth of an inch to attach this trim on this side. And this will just help to kind of give it some more structural support just to put a piece back here. So I'm not gonna cut it at an angle though. I am going to mark right here where this one ends, where the short point of the 45 is, and then I'm gonna cut that so that I can put a straight piece in. Take this out, mark that line across, and cut it straight. I hold my square right up to that mark, and mark it, cut that square. Now I'm gonna measure for the piece in the back that's gonna go up to that straight point. 11 and 7 eighths. So now, if I put this piece in here, like so, I should be able to sneak this piece back here, like so. That is gonna be Perfect. Take these out. So these pieces I want to attach together. I'm gonna glue them, but I also wanna shoot them from the backside here so I can 
limit the amount of holes that I put right here. So it goes like this, I'm just gonna flip it like this, and I wanna see if these brad nails are gonna work. So I'm glad I tested it because you can see it shot out the other side. If I angle it slightly, I won't have that issue. And it doesn't matter if they're angled and the heads stick out right here because it's gonna be on the back side as long as it doesn't go out of the face. I'm gonna use some PVC glue. It's a different brand, I'm mixing brands, uh-oh. Probably voiding the manufacturer's warranty. Line up the face like this, and then line up the 45, the short point of the 45. And that's really all I need that will hold it. That's an alternative to a clamp. I'll let that sit for a little bit. All right, so I just want to double check, make sure my piece is good. It's going to go in just like that. That's going to be perfect. And now I want to do some shimming here before I go attaching it to make sure that it's going to stay where I want it to be. So this trim is exactly where it should be. So I'm going to use this part as a reference and I've already ripped down an extra piece of PVC. I'm going to use that as a shim. Slide it in back here. Now, when I put this piece in, what I want to do is take my four foot level and make sure that this is straight all the way down. So if it was like this, see there's a gap here. I'll push this bottom out. Make sure that top is tight. Just like that. And then I can measure for my shims, which I've already done. This one goes in at the top like this. And then this one, I'm gonna put at the bottom like this. And this front piece of trim really is gonna hold this in, but I'm gonna get some screws into these pieces. Now I can put my piece in. So when those screws get sucked in, I'll be good. So these are GRK trim screws. They have a tip that pre-drills, so I don't have to worry about pre-drilling here. That looks awesome. PVC, so it'll never rot. Now I can take a measurement for the trim piece, but first I'm gonna fill this in with the insulation that I took out of it. I'm gonna be careful and tuck this in here. I'm not gonna jam it in because it's not gonna work as well if you compress it too much. And if you wanna use spray foam, feel free to use spray foam. I just don't like spray foam. That's pretty satisfying. Now, easy peasy, get a measurement for this piece of trim. I have a piece of trim that matches 81 and 3 8 to the short point of the 45. Good. Make sure it fits. Let's pop this in here. I'm gonna pull this out at the top. I'm gonna do some wood glue. Why not? I might need a stool. Maybe not. Then I'm gonna attach this with my finish gun and some galvanized nails. Down here might be tricky with this railing in the way.
I'm also gonna put a couple brad nails in through this joint right here. And now I am gonna bondo this. I like to use bondo. A lot of people use this for cars. That's what it's made for. I'm gonna use the regular stuff, not the bondo for wood because I'm doing PVC and wood. So I'm gonna do this right here. I'm gonna fill all the nail holes with this too because I love to use this stuff, but I also have a little patch right here that I need to fix. This one right here is not nearly as bad, but while I mix up that Bondo, I'm gonna just patch this in. Just dig this out a little bit. This is just rot. Not gonna go too crazy. Remember, we're patching this door to save money. Now I'm gonna chisel up this old caulking so I can redo that. I'm just gonna scrape this a little bit, get to some bare wood so this Bondo adheres. I'm vacuum that up. Okay. Now mix this up. I'm only gonna mix up the amount that I'm gonna use. About that should be good. I'm gonna add the hardener in here. Oop, gotta mix that up. If it comes out liquidy like that, I should have done this to start. You gotta mix it up in the tube. Put that off to the side. Okay, let's see. And then we mix it. You just wanna mix it until it's a uniform color. It's gonna be like a, a red or a pink depending on how much hardener you use. I mean, this stuff sets up pretty quick. This is the fast drying stuff, so you gotta work quickly. And then to start, I'm gonna fill this seam. Okay, and that's gonna fill those screw holes as well. It's already starting to set up. Okay, and then I'm gonna jump to the other one. Fill this in. That's pretty good for a first coat. Now I'm gonna just fill all the nail holes with the leftover Bondo. As this stuff starts to cure, I like to go in with a chisel and before it hardens too much, I like to kind of shape it and make it easier to sand at the end. So I take off the bulk of this material, like for this screw hole, I don't need all of this. And then I can kind of just almost sand it with my finger. That way, there's a lot less sanding to do once it cures completely. A little tedious, but makes a big difference. Like over here, I'll take off the excess in these hard to reach places where the sand, sandpaper is not gonna reach. And then any of these profiles on the trim. And when the coat is dry on the nail holes. I'm just gonna take some sandpaper and by hand, I'm just gonna lightly sand it. Very nice. So the nail holes will be all set with one coat, but I gotta do a second coat on this and on the other spot. So I'm just gonna roughly sand it. I'm not gonna go crazy. I'm gonna get the high spots down and do a second coat. I'm using 120 grit sandpaper for this and that should be fine. I'm gonna paint it so this will help to scuff up the area as well. Before I do a second coat 
on the big stuff. I'm gonna sand all the screw holes and the nail holes to make sure they don't need touch-ups since I'm gonna mix some more stuff up. thinner coat. While I wait for that Bondo to cure completely, I'm going to go around and scrape all this old paint off. I had to guess this hasn't been painted since 1999 when the house was built. All the old paint that was falling off to begin with is scraped off. The reason I do that is because if you have paint that's already flaking off and you paint on top of it, then it's just going to flake off eventually. So I try to get down to bare wood where I can so I can prime it and then paint it. When you're sanding Bondo, it's a good idea to wear a mask. I got this one from RZ Mask. They sent it to me. So big shout out to them and I'll leave a link in the description where you can get it. I'm gonna try and sand this out by hand because I wanna be careful. I don't wanna mess anything up here. So I'm gonna go nice and easy. I'm gonna take some 120 grit and a block of wood. I'm gonna use this 45 to my advantage to get nice and tight in this corner. We'll see how it comes out. This one right here looks perfect. I can feel that it's perfect. You might see a darker spot right here. That that's not um, that's nice and smooth. That's not a bump or anything. On this side, you can see you can see here and here could use some touch-ups, but you gotta judge it based on what you're working on. And if you take a look at the door all around. I think this is going to be great for this application. I'm going to go along and caulk in all this trim and I'm going to prime with oil based primer and then I can put a coat of paint on it. Primer. This is Zinser Cover Stain and it is an oil-based primer for interior, exterior. It works awesome. It is also a stain blocker. Um, so I am gonna prime everything before I paint it. This will lock everything together and hopefully last a long time. Primer is done. I only need one coat of primer. I'm gonna let this dry completely. If you rush with this stuff, you'll mess up the finish completely. I should probably prime this, but this is gonna be replaced with vinyl at some point. I mean, where do you stop anyways? Let's do one thing at a time.
Now it's time for paint. Exterior semi-gloss. Second coat of paint. I'm gonna use some silicone and just put a bead on the bottom here so water can't get in this way. I waited until I painted because you cannot paint silicone. So again, just run a bead right here. My paint's still a little wet, so I'm gonna be careful. I probably should have waited. And I'll do it right here too, because this doesn't have a composite bottom, so I don't want water to sit there and potentially rot that out eventually. And I'll do the same thing on this side. Well, I would say that that looks a lot better. And even though I made a mistake and would have done it differently if I had to do it over again, I think that is gonna last a long time. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're interested, I have a ton of behind the scenes stuff going up on my Patreon page. And you can click the join button below for YouTube memberships, or if you just wanna help support my channel. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Just a couple more things I wanted to talk about. This patch I do think is gonna last a long time, but something you have to keep in mind, especially with us because we're in New England, we have really cold winters, really hot summers, and expansion and contraction happens all throughout the year, and the patch isn't gonna look perfect like it is now forever. For instance, this patch I did about two years ago, similarly, this is wood to wood, and I did a straight cut because this is kind of structural. That's another thing. The patch that I did is not structural, but you can see it's starting to open up here and down here is another part that I patched. And that's just how it is when you patch things in. What might help that is if you glue this together, for instance, I would have used wood glue here, but you have to use something that will bond PVC and wood together if that's what you're using. That's all. Just don't expect it to look perfect forever, but it's a much cheaper solution than replacing that entire door. Yeah, I can't leave that board. That's next. Yeah, this right here, frame saver, rot proof guarantee. I guess they were right. But from that line down is all composite material. That's why it's a rot proof guarantee. But our rot started up here, so, but that's pretty cool. This is veranda PVC trim. I call it vinyl because I'm an idiot. I don't want to rip it like this. I like my fingers. Perfect. Kinda. I can probably cut it like this. Didn't make it. Oh, didn't make it. I need a bigger saw. Clean as a whistle. I'm just going to use some brad nails. That was the wrong piece. That goes up top. Picked the wrong day to do this. There's a lot of uh, a lot of walking today. Oh, you idiot. Bye buddy. Have fun. Unbelievable that people are mowing right now when the fixer's trying to work. Quiet on the set. That sounds good. I think you got a bent shaft, bro. You hit a stump or something. Just get a thin coat on everything. If you see through it, and you see some... Oh, shut up, Matt. <laughs> Never mind. Or prime, paint, do an outro. I hate painting. Hi. Yeah, I wish I had a roller. Why didn't you paint that with a roller, you hack? There's no way I'm putting this job on TikTok. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I can take the heat on this one. <laughs>